partnering for this wonderful student development program on machine learning and internet of things for industrial application if your actions inspire others to read more learn more do more and become more you are a leader now i call upon our hod dr s jagannathan to give away the welcome address thank you arti uh, most respected and honorable chairman dr nalla ji palani swami esteemed and blowed madam secretary dr thamani d palani swami uh, mr b vangat director faculty development cell aict new delhi most blowed ceo sir came came crt uh, dr oti bhuvaneswaran sir uh, most talented principal dr k porkumuran so today uh, uh, chief guest the uh, eminent and uh, Uh, distinguished chief guest dr s balam and uh, directors heads of the department faculty coordinator faculty members uh, participants from various colleges and industry uh, in and around uh, all the states from uh, india so my dear students good morning to all the entering knowledge based economy and society will not be a successful if we if we cannot create platform of building observed capacity it means knowledge to assimilate and use a new knowledge which is learned society in the stick and ready to assimilate and apply new knowledge this the challenges related to iot and its implementation uh, and application towards to this industries and the new era of the machine learning and uh, vr and ar applications to the industries so certainly helps for the industry 4.0 uh, and this is in mind uh, we are organized uh, this stdp program act sponsored stdp program on machine learning and iot applications for industries it is gives me a great pr- pleasure to welcome you all for inaugural function of the act sponsored stdp program phase 1 through online for 6 days organized by department of triple e dr ngp institute of technology coimbatore india it is a great privilege also to welcome our uh, eminent and talented chief guest dr s balamurgan sir director research and development intelligent research consultancy service coimbatore tamil nadu for this inauguration of the stdp program his presence has been source of guidance and inspiration for us in all our activities ensures that we always do the right thing in the right way such a such a personality of our most respected and honorable chairman dr nalla ji palani swami welcome you sir let me express my gratitude to our respected madam secretary dr dhamani ji palani swami for his inspiring guidance valuable advice and continued encouragement at every stage and providing the facilities in the college to organize such a event welcome you ma'am i would also like to extend warm welcome to our ceo sir welcome you sir i am most respected uh, uh, mr b venkat director faculty development cell act new delhi welcome you sir i take this opportunity to welcome our principal the dynamic leader and flexible person in all academic matters for gracing this occasion we are privileged that he has given his valuable advice to organize this stdp program welcome you sir i am delighted to offer a happy welcome to all the officials from aict and it it's of the departments of our college and administrative officer and faculty coordinator all my dear faculty members i would like to welcome you all for the stdp participants from various colleges and and industries throughout the india i take this opportunity to welcome my dear uh, faculty members faculty coordinators and student friends for the, this stdp program i take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to aict officials for granting this stdp program so without them this won't success and i thank and also i thank our management ceo principal for permitting us to organize this type of stdp program for faculty members and research scholars and research industry persons i am sure that this stdp program will provide a good platform to exchange ideas a uh, lot of take home uh, messages thus researching in appropriate conclusion for 6 days program sure uh, with this program we will have uh, definite uh, take home messages we will have in uh, setup for industry 4.0 uh, 
for the new knowledge, uh, this IoT and machine learning application to industries. Uh, uh, once again, welcome you all for this STDP program, AACT sponsor STDP program for phase one. So phase two and phase three will happen in uh, August and September months. Uh, dear participants, uh, attendance will be compulsory for all. So each and every session, we will send a link for the attendance. Uh, and also, end of the sixth day, we are going to conduct uh, a quiz program. Uh, that is what will be based on uh, AACT norms, uh, based on AACT uh, uh, officials will be giving this instruction. So based on this only, we are producing certificate. So thank you all. And once again, welcome you all for this STDP program. Thank you, sir. The man of distant vision and a fountainhead of illuminating ideas, an ideal of knowledge and experience and inspiration to all of us. Now, I call upon our principal, Dr. K. Purkumaran, to felicitate the gathering. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, um, uh, most respected and distinguished to chief guest, uh, Dr. Balamurgan Sanmugam, uh, Dr. H. Jagannathan, the convener of this program, uh, professors from uh, various institutions, faculty team from Dr. NGP Institute of Technology, uh, the organizing team from student uh, uh, members, uh, present media. Good morning to all of you. Uh, it's a great honor and privilege for me to associate with the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering of Dr. NGP Institute of Technology to organize this uh, faculty empowerment program called the STTP, sponsored by All India Council for Technical Education, for empowering the faculty members of engineering and technology teams, especially Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, so that directly or indirectly it will be beneficial to students community and research community. Electrical and Electronics Engineering of Dr. NGP Institute of Technology is doing a lot of activities, innovative practices for the benefit of the scientific society. Always they are leading and doing a lot of innovative processes in all the categories so that any researcher, any faculty or any student, they'll become an all-round performer, multitasking personality. That's why the team from Tripoli headed by Dr. S. Jagannathan and all the faculty, I am also, I am proud to say that I am also part of Tripoli as a professor. Uh, and uh, seeing all the uh, progressive activities uh, conducted by the department uh, for the students, for the faculty, for the alumni, and other stakeholders also. Uh, we have strong industry alliances and partnership and established various centers of excellences uh, with reference to electrical engineering, Salser Innovation Center, NI, LabU Academy, Texas Instrument Center, IIT Bombay, Yantra Robotics Center, so that our uh, faculty team, they are able to provide a hands-on training experience to the students community and uh, our faculty members have been trained by many industries. So this is the strength of uh, AAA and uh, I congratulate the entire team for uh, getting grant from uh, uh, eminent uh, organization AACTE for hosting this uh, faculty empowerment or enrichment program on uh, Industry 4.0. So Industry 4.0 will be uh, uh, ruling the world and uh, all the concepts related to machine learning, deep learning for most of the industrial applications related to electrical engineering. Without electrical engineering specialization, the industry wouldn't be able to perform well in the future with uh, added advantage of Industry 4.0, intelligent system development, machine learning, deep learning. That's why we studied, uh, always I quote, uh, uh, naturally inspiring algorithms. Uh, uh, development of intelligent algorithm, it's just simple, uh, related to natural processing. Like there are many uh, natural processes are converted into algorithm. That is, uh, now, nowadays it is called as a uh, machine learning and deep learning processes. So that's why uh, our uh, students, they won many competitions, uh, competed with uh, premier organizations, and they won uh, laurels to, uh, they brought laurels to Dr. Egypt into the technology. Once again, uh, on behalf of the NGPIT, uh, KMCH group of institutions, I respectfully welcome our chief guest, Dr. Rais Balamurgan, 
about his uh, time presence to motivate the faculty team and researchers. Uh, I once again congratulate uh, Dr. S. Jagannath and the entire team of uh, Tripoli uh, from Dr. NGPAT for taking initiative to organize this program. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to call upon Mr. A. Sindhilnadan, Assistant Professor Tripoli, to give a few words about Student Development Program. Thank you, Arte. A warm welcome and greeting from all gathered here. It gives me immense pleasure to say about the AACT-sponsored Phase 1 online STTP on machine learning and Internet of Things for industrial application organized by Dr. NGP Institute of Technology, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Out of 1,200 registered, 200 were selected to attend this STTP. The advisory committee members for this STTP comprises of Dr. Tavamani P. Palnesamy, Secretary of Dr. NGP Institute of Technology, Dr. O.T. Bhuneshwaran, CEO of KMC ERT, Dr. K. Purkubaran, Professor and Principal of Dr. NGP Institute of Technology and coordinated by Dr. S. Jagannathan, Professor and Head of Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Secretary members are Dr. K. Ramash Kumar, Associate Professor of Tripoli Department, Dr. V. Ranganayagi, Associate Professor of Tripoli Department, Mr. A. Sindhulnathan, Assistant Professor of Tripoli Department, and Mr. J. Ragul Kumar, Assistant Professor of Tripoli Department. This STTP consists of 13 sessions. Today in the forenoon session, we have Dr. Palamurgan Shanmugam, Director R&D of Intelligent Research Consultancy Services to present on Next Generation Smart Healthcare System. In the afternoon session, we have Engineer Purushottaman from Artificial Intelligence Lab of Banaryaman Institute of Technology to deliver lecture on AI application and its implementation. On 28th of July, we have two speakers Firstly, Mr. Mani Kandan Ramaswamy, Principal Software Architecture from Tata Communication Chennai, will deliver about AWS, Cloud Service and Development Tools. And secondly, we have Dr. G. Pandian from Indian Oil Corporate Limited, Chennai, will deliver about IoT implementation and challenges for engineers in oil industries. On 29th of July, we have four speakers. Engineer Badibelan Palani Raj from Chief Innovator Office, Haryana, will deliver lecture on solar PV system parameter monitoring using IoT. Secondly, we have Mr. Ashwin K, Manager of Ohms Energy Management Limited, Chennai, to deliver lecture on switch gear and protective devices. And then we have Dr. Uma Papa, DGM, NLC India Limited, Tamil Nadu to deliver on the topic digitalization scenario in a power station, a case study. Finally, we have Engineer Sudhakar, project manager from l and Technology Services USA, who will deliver on the topic of IoT application in automotive electric system. On 30th July, we have three speakers. Firstly, Dr. S. Jagannathan, Professor and Head of Tripoli Department will deliver lecture on application machine learning and IoT in power system and followed by Dr. K. Ramash Kumar, Associate Professor of Tripoli Department of Dr. NGP Institute of Technology to deliver a lecture on contradictory DC to DC converter for IoT applications. Finally, we have C. Nallasivan from Tangent Co. Chennai to deliver a session on implementation of AMR in industrial utility. On 31st July, we have two speakers. Firstly, we have Dr. S. Ravi Chandran, Principal Scientist of CSIR to deliver lecture on the topic fuel cell with IoT. And finally, we have Dr. S. Sendal Kumar, Professor from NIT Trichy to deliver lecture on topic wind turbine monitoring and control system using IoT. On the last day, that is 1st of August, we have assessment. Stay connected and keep learning. Thank you, one and all gathered here. Thank you, sir. It's over to Abdul Fayaz. 
a man not in his speech not in his thoughts we saw his greatness only in his action in his life so i would like to extend a very warm welcome to dr s balamugan sir we welcome you sir the man who received his btech mtech and phd degrees all in the field of information technology from anna university chennai he has published 50 books 250 plus international journals as well as conferences and 65 patents to his credit he is the director of research and development and intelligent research consultancy services that is iacs kambatu he is serving as research consultancy to many companies startups smes and msmes he is the editor in chief of the books series in artificial intelligence and soft computing for industrial transformation in skivana and john wiley book series now he is working as a managing editor in nsp that is natural science publishing which is located in united kingdom totally he received 21 awards and honors in his career some awards are he is the recipient of rashtriya vidya gaurav gold medal award and he received the best educationalist award from honorable justice op saxna supreme court new delhi and he is the recipient of two lifetime achievement awards he is the recipient of dr apj abdul kalam sadbhavana award from honorable balmiki prasad singh former governor of sikkim and he received jewel of india award from mr gurpreet singh general secretary india and also he received star of asia award from mr kon former deputy prime minister thailand and also he received awards like young scientist award young researcher award and outstanding scientist award moreover he is our pride of nation his biography is listed in marquis who's who new jersey usa his professional activities include roles as editor in chief associate editor editorial board member for more than 500 plus international journals as well as conferences of high repute and impact he has also been invited as chief guest research person in many reputed universities and colleges at national and international levels his research interest includes in artificial intelligence augmented reality internet of things big data analysis cloud computing and wearable computing i once again welcome dr s balamugan sir for this wonderful session so the session is yours thank you abdul for the lengthy introduction of mine welcome sir uh respected uh, uh chairman uh, dr nallaji palniswami kobe medical center and hospital uh, respected madam dr uh, daumani d palniswami secretary dr ngp institute of technology uh, doc, uh respected dr uh, ot bhuvaneshwar ceo and uh, respected uh, professor dr k porkumaran principal of uh, dr ngp institute of technology and uh, uh, professor dr s uh, jagannathan a uh, professor and head of uh, 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 triple department of ngp institute of technology first i wish to extend a, a thanks for uh, inviting me for this uh, uh, sttp uh, aact sponsor sttp uh, as a chief guest and also as a resource person uh, and a very happy morning to all uh, the participants uh, despite this uh, uh, covid uh, um a uh, pandemic uh, situation you have made a presence over here for the attending this uh, very very useful uh, act sponsored uh, sttp especially on the topic on uh, machine learning uh, and iot uh, so uh, uh, thanks uh, thank you participants um so before getting into my session i'll just uh, have uh, I'll, i'll just give uh, a brief uh, overview of uh, this uh, uh, how this uh, machine learning uh, uh i mean the machine learning and iot plays an important role in uh, uh, industrial transformation or how it is being used in industries like uh, uh one of the main example is siemens uh, where uh, um, uh, they, uh, they they there is a uh, wonderful project called as internet of trains so um the nowadays now uh, at present uh, the trains are being serviced only by how, how we actually look into the uh, particular train whether it needs service or not we don't have a predictive method to uh, tell us that uh, the train is needs to be serviced 
so internet of uh, trains is one of uh, the um, uh, or, um, i mean uh, the most uh, uh, important project taken by siemens uh, uh, which will give a predictive maintenance on uh, when this particular when the train needs to be serviced so this is a, a very good application of uh, machine learning and iot which is being adopted in, in industry uh, another one is uh, uh, thyscare nap uh, which, which is which is an elevator company i mean a uh, uh, lift manufacturing company so here also uh, all the internet connected data uh, are being uh, uh, whenever the uh, 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 lift is about to fail uh, the pr prediction is being made uh, using the machine learning and also some data science is also being involved over there and uh, this will save money and uh, some unnecessary servicing also and uh, similarly rolls royce for uh, for maintaining the rolls royce is, is uh, as you know it's it's a, it's a automobile manufacturing company so uh, uh, the machine learning can be used to uh, keep track back uh, um, i mean uh, 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 learn the learn through experience uh, 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 this uh, the machine maintenance uh, i mean uh, it, it has about uh, 70 trillion data points collected uh, uh to be fed into the machine learning system to predict when the uh, hardware uh, or uh, that particular uh, hardware component or uh, um, uh, the machine the motor component needs to be serviced another uh, important application uh, of uh, machine learning and iot is agriculture as we uh, know like uh, drones uh, are now used for uh, uh, spraying the pesticides uh, for um, uh, um, uh, for, uh, uh, for for in, in order to alleviate the weeds from the uh, plants uh, plants so the main aspect over here is the deep learning concept the extended neural network concept uh, one of the practical application of uh, 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 of agriculture is so now in in the in uh, uh, the late, uh, latest few, uh, news you would have come across uh, the attack of locust swarms especially in north india it has also hit in south india also locust swarms they come as as a swarm as a very big swarm like uh, about uh, so much of uh, crores of uh, locusts uh, vertically like uh, so so much of uh, locusts uh, coming uh, as a, as a swarm and it is destroying a lot of crops so uh, um, uh, india in uh, 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 yeah, in hand in hand with the other uh, countries uh, they have exported a lot of pesticides to iran and now it is under control over there uh, so uh, this this particular locust swarm is uh, is, uh, is is reported as a, a biggest threat in the past 30 years uh, the 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 previous locust swarm the worst locust swarm was on 1990s and after 30 years it has been reflected uh, in 2020 it has been uh, invaded into uh, the northern uh, rajasthan uh, the north india parts and some of the south india so southern part of india is also being affected by these locust swarms here uh, there is a challenge over here so what is the challenge over here is that whenever we need for going for uh, uh, i mean um, uh, 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 for a mechanism for uh, 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 for spraying the pesticides for killing the, the locust swarms or for destroying the locust swarms, the plant also gets uh, uh, affected. Uh, so um, so the, these drones can be fitted with a camera. Uh, so what I'm telling is uh, this can be taken as a future work of uh, uh, IoT and machine learning for application in agriculture. Uh, so, uh, like uh, uh, the drones can be fitted to the camera where the camera will be able to capture what, which one is the weed which one is the plant and which one is the uh, locust and uh, accordingly the spray can be made such that we are actually going for killing only the locust and not uh, uh, and that then there's no harm to that particular uh, plant so this is about uh, uh, so some of the industrial applications uh, and, uh, and of course in healthcare we have uh, a huge application of uh, machine learning iot uh, and deep uh, deep learning robotics also we have a lot of applications in healthcare since healthcare is i am going to deal in detail in my session let me not uh, uh, detail over here uh, so so we are all under uh, so the, so this is one a particular difficult situation uh, covid 19 crisis situation we have never seen in our lives 
uh so most of us are very much perplexed on what to do what is what is what is the next uh, what are all the challenges this uh, uh, covid 19 could impose upon us all these things so uh, as far as my personal vision whenever we are uh, stuck up with some uh, uh, challenge we, uh, we it has this also an equal uh, opportunity waiting over there uh, opportunity for us to grow uh, waiting over there so i just i just want to pen out uh, spell out certain um, research opportunities out of covid 19 uh, coming out of covid 19 so covid 19 as we know that uh, coronavirus is uh, um, uh, uh, i mean uh, hereditary i mean uh, i mean it spreads uh, through touch and uh, feel and also through the droplets of uh, uh, saliva um so uh, uh, we as uh, engineers and technologists can work upon a vending machine an automatic vending machine uh, like a, a voice based vending machine uh, so that the sanitizer and the mask can be uh, um, i mean uh, it, 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 it could be sold uh, just by uh, dropping the coin over there and uh, uh, getting the sanitizer and mask and here thereby uh, avoiding the human to human interaction over there uh there are a lot of applications robots can be used to supply medicines uh, uh, to people so nowadays even people uh, who go for supplying medicines also get uh, infected by covid 19 they are also people so it is it is uh, as uh, um, uh, uh, engineers and technologists uh, what we can do is uh, what, what we we can do from our side in order to save the lives of people is we can uh, uh, develop some uh, something called as a covid co uh, robo for testing also the testing purposes now mm, testing is being uh, done uh, manually like uh, doctors uh, nurses they do uh, the deep throat uh, uh, testing so that could also be uh, automated uh, then uh, and, uh, and uh, you can also go for a ro uh, ro ro uh, i mean uh, uh, designing a robo for doing the same and uh, especially toilet cleaning uh the patients uh, uh, covid 19 patients uh, uh, those who have used the particular toilets most of the covid 19 patients are uh, quarantined at home and most of the uh, houses are having uh, only one restroom and uh, there is a possibility uh, for the covid uh, coronavirus to spread through faces also so in that case uh, it is it is difficult for a person for another person to clean the toilet uh, because there is a possibility that he or she may get infected the, from, from that and it is also not possible for the patient to clean the toilet in that case we can have a, a, a robo for uh, uh, cleaning uh, the toilet so these are all some potential opportunities the brighter sides uh, the opportunities out of research opportunities out of this uh, uh, covid 19 um, so this vending machine and uh, um, Uh, the medicine supply supplying medicines to uh, the uh, the patients uh, so uh, you can have uh, you can we can go for designing the robots where iot machine learning artificial intelligence everything for calls, uh, calls into place and uh, uh, automated testing uh, for uh, covid positive or not and also for toilet cleaning these are some of the research opportunities where you can actually invade uh, you can also Uh, look forward for funding opportunities there's there, there's a huge uh, uh, opportunity open opportunity for funding in these areas because uh, mm, this is a crisis and the cases are going on increasing so something has happened happened has happened so what is our uh, uh, reaction to that particular event so coronavirus has started its spreading and we don't know what is going to be tomorrow so what we can do today to our best as technologists so that uh, we can get we can get a better tomorrow uh, as a medical person probably uh, uh, they are doing their best as a technology person what we can do our best so that we can make this the, the, the tomorrow better like uh, helping uh, the patients helping the doctors of course uh, uh, by, by taking the covid 19 test by developing robo for taking the covid 19 test will definitely save a life of a, lo a lot of doctors right from getting infected Uh, and uh, uh, so these are some of the research opportunities that i wish i would wish to uh, spell i i wish to spell out in the, in this uh, um, in uh, felicitation address uh, regarding uh, health care specifically regarding the health care we will de see in detail uh, in the in the first session thank you thank you sir Uh, thank you for your uh, valuable inaugural speech um, for this stdp program we we'll want to next next sessions uh, uh,
sir uh, we'll proceed sir thank you sir. okay sir okay Yes, sir. Is it visible, sir? Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, in uh, today's session, we are going to look into the next generation uh, healthcare system, a smart healthcare system. Um, so, before getting into this uh, healthcare system, so uh, what is the present scenario of the healthcare system? We need to understand it, and then only we will be able to appreciate what is the smartness we are going to include. What is the smartness we are actually going to uh, include over here, and what are the, will be the benefits of uh, it? So now, if we go for a, a hospital, any multi-specialty hospital, we do take uh, our uh, prescriptions. Suppose if we are, uh, if the patient is under uh, um, medication for a long time and he visits for uh, another hospital he he or she takes all the prescriptions medical records lab tests everything in hand in paper format right uh, so this uh, um, paper format could be turned into something called as a personal healthcare records e format uh, electronic format and could also be hosted onto the cloud I will tell you in detail in the forthcoming slides how this is going to actually uh, alleviate the problem of uh, um, uh, communication between the patient as well as the doctor and between the doctors also, the doctor and the specialist, specialist doctor also. So personal healthcare records uh, 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 actually it, it uh, uh, take up, I mean, uh, remain the uh, long term uh, property of that uh, particular patient. So, so my PHR machines uh, is. Um, uh, uh, is, is, is what we are going to see about a small architecture about patient centric system that takes a new architecture solution to healthcare uh, records, interoperability between healthcare uh, records. And uh, patients can view their medical data and can access and share, can share through virtual uh, machine. And uh, multi authority, uh, my PHR system, as uh, I already mentioned, suppose if uh, there's one, uh, 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 I mean, there's one. Uh, person with a very chronic uh, uh, cancer and if that particular person uh, is being uh, 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 I mean diagnosed uh, uh, it is under he is under treatment by a specialist and suppose if this specialist needs to consult with another specialist probably in some other uh, uh, hospital in the same uh, geographical location or in some other geographical location suppose if the if, if, if all the documents are in the form of papers it is very, it is very difficult so uh, this smart uh, system, uh, healthcare system, which I am going to describe in this particular uh, um, uh, presentation, will alleviate this particular problem. So this is the essence. So first one is uh, the paper-based PHRs, where all the records uh, pertaining to a particular patient, uh, the 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 case sheet. Uh, so we generally say it to be a case sheet whenever a patient comes to an emergency or a, so what is the problem so everything is being recorded in the case sheet and it has been filed paper file paper in, in a paper and it has been filed in a folder i mean a, a, a physical folder and uh, a, a, almost all uh, the prescriptions suppose if uh, the person has some uh, some uh, related complications also suppose if the person is suffering from diabetics as well as uh, uh, the hypertension so what are all the uh, 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 medicines which is uh, which he is uh, taking right now what are all the uh, tests he has undergone how, how many years he has been suffering how many fluctuations have been there everything is being uh, there in the paper based health um, health records and how many physicians has, has he consulted right from his family physician uh, from uh, from the family physician to uh, right now here uh, the specialist diabetologist or a, um, uh, a person who specialized uh, for treating hypertension uh, or uh, blood pressure so all these things are paper based next level of uh, going for the healthcare record is uh, electronic uh, device based phrs where we go for turning these uh, paper based uh, healthcare records into 
uh, e records so nowadays these thing these uh, electronic uh, device based uh, phs are, are uh, right now in practice so we uh, would um, see that uh, 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 there will be some few tests which is uh, uh, from, for example a blood test uh, uh, is being prescribed by the doctor suppose if we go for a multi specialty hospital and we give the blood and uh, uh, even before the time of uh, time which is being mentioned when the result is uh, come uh, this result will be arrived the doctor will uh, receive the results in their hand so electronic uh, device based phs is uh, uh, nowadays it is it is it is coming web based phs is that uh, uh, the details regarding uh, one particular patient his history his history of medication if he has any allergies everything is being moved on to a public domain called cloud so by moving on to uh, moving the data so here user refers to the patient so by moving the data of uh, the medical data of one patient uh, uh, of, of n number of patients to the cloud uh, it is very um, uh, i mean it is very very easy for the hospital to access the data and uh, to provide uh, uh, the correct treatment uh, especially in the case of a golden hour uh, the uh, for example if uh, the person user one uh, fainted faints or gets unconscious and uh, he or she is not in situation to tell uh, what uh, what what is the treatment he has been undergoing he is uh, let us consider the situation that uh, user one is in a critical situation and he has been uh, transported to the nearby hospital uh, through ambulance suppose if his healthcare records are already been uh, stored in a, a public cloud uh, so the nearby hospital so whomsoever the physician over there can learn what is the uh, pattern what is the pattern whether he, suppose if the person being uh, is is, is has, has gone into uh, unconsciousness because of fits uh, what is the pattern of fits so whether it is fatal or non fatal so all these things uh, similarly whether uh, the whether the person is uh, allergic to penicillin or some other drugs so the doctors can learn about the patient and can uh, come up with an idea of this is how we are going to treat the patient even before the patient comes to the hospital through ambulance right so using iot uh, the data uh, i mean this uh, the nearby hospital will be alerted that uh, user uh, one so you so let us consider the user a b c d e so this particular patient is coming so uh, any uh, healthcare uh, uh, i mean uh, a doctor or a duty doctor at, at that particular time can access the uh, data about a b c d e uh, patient learn about him properly and uh, can provide the correct first aid so generally in medi medical terms they say that if if uh, the first aid is provided is, is provided the i mean the, the way in which the first aid is being provided how accurate the first aid is being provided this actually eases the next phase of next phase of treatment since my uh, brother is a doctor uh, i just knew this about something about this golden hour and other the uh, this first uh, first aid importance of first aid so first aid is the first treatment what we give to save the life so all the other complications could be handled by the specialists so how accurate this particular uh, the first uh, i mean uh, the first state could be done so that could be much more accurate uh, be, uh, as uh, even before the person comes into the hospital the here uh, the doctor will be able to learn about what is the pattern whether he has a, a physical um, uh, illness earlier uh, or suddenly uh, the person has whether he has been under medication for the past 2 to 3 days uh, uh this um, all these things could be learned by the uh, person over there uh, i mean uh, the doctors over there and the uh, correct uh, 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 prediction and uh, uh, close to 100% uh, no not exactly 100% correct uh, first aid could not be done because it is a golden hour at least close to 100% uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, treatment could be given to that particular person as a first aid also considering this particular covid 19 situation coronavirus situation uh, most people uh, they, they say that cough uh, co common colds cough these are all like uh, the co uh, common symptoms of uh, uh, covid 19 and uh, the worst symptom that is the, i mean uh, the whenever the, uh, the condition gets worse the person gets suffocated 
right uh, the difficulty in breathing so in such a case in such, if 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 uh, such uh, in, in such a case the person is being uh, transferred uh, to uh, the nearby hospital government hospital or uh, any private hospital which offers uh, uh, covid 19 treatment uh, uh, so if, suppose if his electronic health records are being stored in the cloud server so so the doctors can again he 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 or she can um, can know about whether the patient has uh, uh, has undergone some so whether he has uh, taken uh, crocin or colpol any paracetamol tablets in the past four to five days so that uh, uh, he or she may confirm that the patient is being infected with covid 19 which means that the suffocation is because of covid 19 so we uh, at least they can come to a prediction so uh, so in case of uh, covid 19 also the covid 19 treating coronavirus patients that uh, especially uh, the patients uh, with a very uh, chronic illness uh, the, um, this smart healthcare system comes into picture. So microdata over here is uh, the data which carries medical information. Uh, and why do we say it to be a microdata is that uh, so whenever we, there is a uh, uh, when whenever we share a medical data, uh, privacy also comes into picture. So uh, it is not necessary for uh, one particular person to disclose all the medical data to everyone. Right. For example, let us consider user one is uh, or, or maybe, uh, for for instance, user two is uh, suffering from uh, uh, HIV. He's HIV positive uh, patient. Right. So it is necessary. It, it is it is enough that the doctor knows that the person is uh, a HIV positive patient, uh, um, and uh, and the corresponding treatments can be given. It is not necessary for the other public uh, to know about it. See, whenever we go for a public domain like uh, uh, whenever we go for posting uh, the data on a public domain there is a positive as well as negative the positive is easy access by the right authority and uh, the, ne the negative is wrong access uh, uh, illegitimate access by the wrong authority for example if uh, the user 5 or user 6 is a colleague of uh, user 2 and he accesses this particular information and finds that uh, this person is HIV positive right and uh, working for an organization it is not necessary for uh, uh, for uh, the others to know whether a person is hiv positive or not because it's not just spreading disease through it is it's not it doesn't um, apart from blood transfusion and the, some some other uh, means it doesn't spread through just uh, through, it's not an airborne disease waterborne disease is not not to touch everything so generally in organizations they won't take hiv positive test so hiv positive persons are treated as normal as that but the user file may threaten that I have seen your uh, uh, data in the cloud server. I have access to this particular data in cloud server, and I found your HIV positive. And uh, I will say it in the organization, or probably bully you, or something like that. So, in order to do that, so the securing this particular data in this particular cloud server is important. So that is what, just like life, how it is a package deal. It has positives and negatives. So, whenever we go for the public domain, it has a positive also there. Positive is uh, hospitals are able to gain uh, control of uh, control uh, i mean control access to that uh, information and negative is that uh, an uh, unauthorized user so we need to have unauthorized user gaining uh, access to that and then threatening the person unnecessarily so we need to have some access control mechanism uh, uh, for um, uh, access control mechanism the, so cloud uh, uh, basically the cloud uh, security is a very huge topic the, the topic itself is a, is a very huge topic and since we are going to deal about next generation um, healthcare system, let me not uh, cover go detail into this uh, cloud security. But it is a very interesting uh, area of uh, research. So technological impacts. Uh, so this is uh, the major uh, uh, differentiation between the traditional medical information system and cloud-based uh, medical information system. So lack of av availability of global medical uh, information. Yes. Suppose if uh, a patient uh, comes uh, into picture and uh, uh, if a doctor treats, uh, so doctor will be able to uh, get the healthcare records from the cloud uh, and uh, provide the necessary treatment. Suppose if the doctor in India, he wants to consult with another, another specialist physician who is working in some other country. So the same uh, thing, uh, so the same data can be accessed by that particular physician who is uh, residing in another country and they can also have a conversation regarding this and provide the correct treatment. Uh, so that, uh, that, is, uh, that is the ease, that, that is the benefit out of cloud computing and that is the uh, 
that is lacking in case of a traditional medical information system, the paper based uh, uh, health records. So, uh, electronic uh, medical storage system for storing the patients is that uh, again, see, electronic medical storage system is that there is a permanent storage of, uh, 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 of data regarding the patients. So, so, the doctor will be loaded with, uh, uh, instead of here having the paper files, uh, the, we, they'll be having all uh, the, uh, the, the files and folders what we have it in our system. So, he, so he'll be able to see it. But that is also, uh, you, you consider my case. Uh, uh, suppose if uh, I'm the patient and if I'm going for a doctor and, uh, and all my data is being uh, recorded in that electronic uh, medium. So, my data is required till my lifetime only. After my lifetime, my, my uh, medical data is not required. But in the case of an electronic my, my medical storage system, it goes on and on and on that this medical information regarding my, my I mean mine, my uh, medical history is uh, uh, pertained in the, it is it's always there in it, and unless and until we go and say that the person has expired. So it is not necessary. So you can move that particular uh, uh, file from the memory so that uh, you can make you, you can go for the uh, you can uh, store the other person's thing. Uh, so that is the that is the main uh, advantage of going for a cloud uh, based uh, medical information system. Uh, so here, uh, as we know, cloud is see everything is as a service, like right? uh, in the, like uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, stuff as a, as a service, and here storage is also as a service. So storage as and when it is needed. So right now I am aligned. So um, uh, the, my, my data is needed to, uh, to be uh, alive in the uh, cloud. So it, it is there. So once the patient has been uh, expired, so when there's no need of that particular data, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, except a certain uh, type of uh, diseases, which could be transmitted as a, uh, in a heredity, uh, so that could be mentioned in my children uh, records and my record could be entirely be removed. So it is, this is cost efficient uh, technology. So lack of availability of utilization of open so source software or definitely there is no software which is being involved. But here productivity and uh, in the case of cloud based uh, records, productivity and efficiency uh, definitely it is it increases. And, uh, in the case of uh, traditional medical information, the lack of availability of support of multimedia, real time and, uh, Mobility technology, like uh, as I already said, suppose if uh, the person is uh, uh, in, in the case of uh, an emergency situation, the person um, faints or something, uh, we need to take all the records and go and meet the doctor. Suppose if you want, uh, suppose if it is uh, available in the cloud and if the doctor is also away and uh, if we have a, um, uh, an access to the doctor, we can uh, the, the caretaker, for example, uh, if uh, I get fainted or go unconscious, my son can uh, actually uh, call up to the doctor and uh, can tell what is the necessary step to be taken. That is the very next, uh, um, the immediate first aid, what a person can do, not a medical profession, a person, the, the, the a caretaker of mine, my son, my wife. So how, what they, what would be done immediately to save the life. So that could also be uh, done when, when my medical information, uh, uh, medical information, my uh, electronic health records are being stored in cloud. And integration, uh, availability of integration between medical and emergency system, as I told, the, it is lagging in a traditional medical information system. But in the case of uh, um, uh, cloud-based system, see, by, by going for a cloud-based, not Cloud based instance is not only cloud, it is, a, it is a connection of IoT, cloud, and also about the machine learning over here. Okay, so it is basically moving from doctor, uh, uh, I mean, the paper centric system to doctor centric system and patient centric system. See, our main motto is to save life of a patient and to ease the work of the doctor as a technology person, right? So, how we can ease the work of uh, the doctor? So, instead of, uh, so if the doctor has uh, um, access, easy access to the patient's data, then they are actually helping the doc doctor. So, and even the, of course, uh, by um, uh, providing the correct, uh, by the doctors providing the uh, uh, correct um, diagnosis, immediate diagnosis, uh, diagnosis and treatment, uh, uh, the first day, uh, they'll be saving lives. So, it's a patient-centric system. So, uh, uh, um, as I already told you, uh, since uh, we are moving the personal healthcare records to a public domain, so it is a personal healthcare record to public. So anything personal on public is subject to 
risk anything personal upon uh, on, on a public domain is subject to risk we why did, but still why do we go for a public domain is we accept the risk because that is there's much more benefit out of it rather than that particular risk okay so moving uh, our uh, healthcare records uh, i mean our uh, personal healthcare records to public domain uh, so, so, so suppose if i travel to another country or another state and where i go and i fall ill even the nearby doctors over there suppose if i go for another uh, for presenting conference in delhi or Bombay, uh, any other uh, places in north india or uh, apart from india and where i fall sick then uh, suppose if i don't carry any of my um, uh, health records uh, suppose if i uh, if, uh, and uh, and uh, the details have been there in the cloud so i i could be readily be admitted in the hospital and my details could be easily be uh, tapped from the uh, public cloud by the physician that is one of the that is the benefit for as far as the patient is considered but uh, um, definitely there is a uh, risk also right so unauthorized user who is going to access this public information so in order to handle with that particular risk uh, uh, there is a small work which 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 is being done with the my phr mission out of my out of uh, the research as well as the research which i supervise uh, so multi authority uh, based encryption uh, system my phr uh, uh, system still have an attribute based uh, authority for handling the different set of users see here uh, so so access control is that so just like how we go for a, a, a simple word document whenever you go for a, opening a word document just being uh, sent in mail so we have whether you have read permission write permission delete permission is the highest form of permission the only the owner can do it so similarly this personal healthcare records can be uh, different level of uh, uh, authorities could be given for example if the person is just uh, a very a layman who is going to uh, access this record then uh, only uh, the reading of the particular uh, um, uh, data uh, uh, um, i mean reading authority could only be given suppose if um, the 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 uh, the person who is accessing to the personal healthcare records is this personal uh, um, i mean a uh, uh, family doctor then the family doctor may even write right so you get, that is the level of authority you need to give so that is why we are giving multi authority based encryption so we cannot uh, go for a single authority things also the, the beauty out of going for uh, uh, um, a smart healthcare system is that multiple authorities are there uh and uh, multiple authority in the sense uh, like uh, for our uh, healthcare re uh, record um, one specialist can uh, can view and i can also uh, uh, can be discussed with other specialists suppose in the case of a cancer let us consider the example of a cancer if a person is being infected with the cancer and uh, uh, the doctor tries his level best and he wants to discuss with his colleague over uh, in some in some other country Uh, to discuss whether the patient that there, there is any chance that the patient can be saved after taking up all the um, uh, treatments regarding uh, chemotherapy, all the whether it is stage three or it is stage four, that could be readily be done because the healthcare record of the particular cancer patient is there in the uh, cloud. Uh, so uh, the person, uh, the the doctor who is actually uh, the authority for that particular person uh, who, uh, for that particular. Uh, uh patient uh, he will have the full authority where uh, uh, it is in the hands of that particular uh, doctor to give the authority to the, the other doctor to view or whatever may be this that is the use of multi authority in this multi authority there is a problem also there is a problem that other persons apart from these people uh, uh, the persons who are intended to look into our personal healthcare records there are other persons also look into our healthcare records and manipulate something wrong and uh, do that is why there is there is something called as a my phr machine which is uh, which is being designed so, so this is about uh, the difference between a single party and a multi party so communication is a one way process and the multi process uh, uh, of course it is a dual dual, uh, dual process and uh, handling a single set of users here a different set of uh, users different sets of users it is possible to handle using multiple authority and uh, access per, uh, uh, permission retrieval permission retrieval as well as shareable permission 
consider this particular uh, aspect so uh, the doctor would be able to retrieve the healthcare records and also the share the healthcare records with his colleague for um, uh, for a consultation or uh, having a discussion about what could, what would be the next uh, better solution for the treating this patient here also there is no right to access the third party right here also we give uh, we 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 don't give it to for a third party and uh, revocation is not being performed here revocation is performed see revocation is nothing but you give a person uh, authority or give a, uh, you give a person a responsibility and you see uh, that uh, the person is misusing the responsibility and finally you get back the particular responsibility because he is misusing so this is very important in the case of a security aspect of healthcare records because um, revocation should be possible because only upon based upon his or her uh, uh, activity upon the healthcare records we can decide whether the person is uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, an authentic user or he tries to do something manipulate something uh, whether he is an attacker suppose if the person is an attacker of the healthcare record then the rights which is being given to that particular person needs to be revoked it needs to be get got back by the user so this is a simple architectural representation from user 1 to user n it is up to user n so, so uh, initial uh, so data owner uh, provides the data about uh, uh, all these uh, so user here represents the patient so our data owner uh, uh, um, uh, feeds all the data regarding these uh, patients uh, and this is the cloud server cloud server which is public and this is this my P, why we are going for this my phr machine because this cloud server is public again security becomes a question mark so in order to provide it we go for my phr machine and uh, so the so initial uh, initiation and key generation at uh, any uh, like in this case attribute based encryption system i, I have mentioned over here but any encryption system which is being uh, um, which is uh, uh, found to be very promising for a uh, healthcare system that could be uh, um uh, i mean uh, um uh, tagged over here and uh, uploading patient information uploading and downloading information uh, multi authority encryption and revoking the key generator all these things uh, uh, comes under this my phr machine which is solely designed uh, for uh, the security of the uh, private data which is being uh, hosted on the public domain this, this is the the sequence of ehs so network model for the cloud uh, data storage and uh, multi data processing so multiple processing is also required as far as multi data processing is also required multiple in the sense one uh, a doctor uh, accessing more than uh, one patient and uh, similarly multiple in the sense uh, for one patient uh, he is uh, he, his data is being shared with this uh, family doctor as well as uh, uh, um, so suppose the family doctor suspects uh, that the problem may be uh, in uh, his brain or his uh, a uh, heart or is in kidneys then the same data is being shared with three di different uh, uh, doctors specialists so multiple as well as multi level uh, multi data and uh, retrieving of outsourced information outlook of the shared data and uh, revocation very important revocation of the generated keys uh, this is a very important uh, concept so as far as the networking model of the cloud data storage uh, the, so Uh, data uh, so user which is the, the patient and cloud uh, uh, storage server cloud service provider and uh, the data owner okay so data owner uh, so multi data processing so data owner is responsible for monitoring and maintaining the user data uh, and uh, data owner who uh, have affiliation with the user will involve in submitting the necessary files right Uh, so uh, so the data owner so suppose if uh, a patient uh, uh, considering this particular covid situation the patient uh, um, uh, was uh, taking a paracetamol tablets for about 3 to 4 days and then suddenly uh, uh, he loses the sense of smell and the sense of taste then that particular information should be actually should actually be fed as a necessary file in this cloud then uh by the by the data owner you call that to be the uh, that, that entity the data owner uh, who should have fed that particular information then only we will be able to access it in the person uh, pers as, as a the person health care record which is being posted in the public domain and similarly for each medical uh, process different set of files are being obtained such as general information lab results surgery history observations see uh, um uh, by using this centralized system centralized uh, Uh, a cloud-based system. Uh, 
we can also reduce the number of uh, of uh, uh, i mean uh, the lab uh, tests what we take and other things also because everything is being centralized that that there will be uh, some uh, sometimes the doctor will be uh, asking um, uh, the patients uh, uh, especially the uh, ladies after their delivery whether you have done this thyroid test or something so thyroid test if it is be being done once the same the test, the, the tests could be recorded and it could be shared over that it is not necessary suppose if the if the women uh, uh, if, if if the lady is uh, in one city and uh, after some days he, uh, she moves to another city with her husband the, then the same records could be shared with the doctor uh they are very uh, decreasing uh, the uh, the re repetence uh, i mean uh, your uh, uh, repeating the tests uh, could be uh, avoided yes this is an important uh, uh, diagram uh, which actually uh, explains about uh, uh, the multi days data processing so suppose if uh, the patient one has uploaded uh, his information so this is uh, the information regarding this particular patient one and uh, Uh, uh uh so this particular uh, uh, storage is being allocated to this particular uh, patient one uh, temporarily uh, until his probably during lifetime uh, uh, a lifetime of a person is actually uh, um, uh, countable like right? so uh, in, in the countable number of years this will be uh, 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 this data will be uh there and from there the care providers can upload the the data and the next uh, again uh, the user two wants to um uh store the same data in this particular space then it is not possible because this particular space is not yet empty the person is alive and is, uh, and uh, his records his or her records are still there and uh, he or she may, may need it may need treatment so uh, the person two has look for look for uh, another space in the cloud similarly for a uh, user 3 suppose if there is an unauthorized user apart from the doctors uh, if there is an unauthorized user who wants to access this information right and the way uh, then that particular access should be denied and uh, this user should be uh, tagged as an unauthorized user because uh, he is not the intended user of this particular uh, data right and uh, the way the, so there are a lot of uh, when you when it comes to an unauthorized user that that information security cryptography and information security is uh, independently a very big uh, topic uh, so it can be a masquerader a mis misfeasor or a clandestine user or any type of uh, um, uh, unauthorized access so we uh, right now i just uh, uh, term uh, the person to be an unauthorized user so in depth there may be uh, multiple types of unauthorized users so whatever may be the type uh, depending upon the type uh, the the i mean the access permission to this uh, Mm, eh ehs is being denied this is a, a simple uh, uh, experimental result of uh, so as for example you have a number of patients suppose if the uh, doctor wants to look into the patient number 24 right uh, and uh, again there are there are two categories of uh, files so, so general as well as surgical information right so we can go for anonymizing the data also so anonymizing the data is that projecting only necessary details and hiding what what are all the uh, necessary uh, unnecessary details suppose uh, um, uh, uh, you consider this particular patient data is being shared with a uh, generic person uh, person 3 for uh, uh, the count uh, they come for census uh, right so whether the person is uh, is uh, now they come uh, now healthcare providers they come to, uh, uh, to every home and uh, uh ask about whether you have uh, senior citizens uh, in your uh, home whether they have comorbidities whether uh, uh, they have been uh, whether uh, there is uh, blood pressure sugar complaints uh, diabetes complaints or any other kidney problems on the so whether it is there or not that is information that information is uh, enough for them the, the history behind that particular information is necessary only for the doctors who is actually treating so We, so here in this since the, the the treating doctor is actually opening the file both this general as well as the surgery part the surgical uh, informa information regarding the, the particular patient is being displayed suppose if uh, a normal healthcare worker who takes a, a, a census for this covid 19 it is it is necessary that it, it is sufficient uh, to provide only the details whether uh, so yes uh, there are two 
um, uh, senior citizens in our home, and one person is suffering for, for, for from this uh, uh, disease of uh, uh, diabetics for the, this much time, and uh, the other person is suffering. This detail alone is sufficient. And uh, what are all the medical things? All these things are just not necessary because that that may in turn come as a threat to the person. That is the reason. we are going for anonymizing the particular data so so this is about uh, uh, preserving the privacy in, uh, in the cloud so any form of uh, so we are not going to de deal in detail about the encryption technique just uh, out of scope of the topic which i have selected so outlook of uh, shared data uh, so multi authority involves user to share their medical data to their uh, care provider or the institution whom they wish to swap the treatment process or to outlook the Treatment process. If the care provider is uh, initiated uh, uh, person, then n number of files can be shared. Shared file can be decrypted, and then uh, they may outlook the data. Outlook the data here actually refers to what actually we look. At, what is the projection of the data? Right. Uh, for example, uh, you consider like uh, uh, a person. Um, uh, uh, I mean. Uh, um, Uh, a specialist has access to uh, the data of all the, uh, um, I mean, the history as well as the everything, all the information regarding the patient. And suppose if one of his uh, student, a medical student, a PG doctor, uh, he or she uh, is uh, currently deputed to look into the patient, so it is in the hands of that particular doctor to give whether to give the, uh, the details or not. If at all the details are given, to to Which particular level the details are to be shared to that particular PG doctor, doctors who are in, uh, up, um, um, who are currently uh, um, practicing at that, that particular time. Probably the person may feel uh, sick during an untimely, uh, unearthly hour, like uh, in the midnight, like two o'clock. Uh, I mean, early morning, two o'clock, at three o'clock, in the midnight, twelve o'clock, at that particular time. So the uh, access rights is there in the hands of the chief doctor. The so the chief doctor can give the access rights to uh, the to any of the other doctors uh, so that uh, they can look into the patient and uh, look into the details the necessary details which is being shared at that particular time by the uh, person uh, by the chief doctor and uh, take the necessary steps. So this is an outlook of the shared data. So uh, as a doctors, hospitals, so encrypted file and uh, at the end uh, they go for. Uh, Uh, the decryption and the uh, and the care provider over here is uh, the uh, person who is uh, uh, responsible for uh, 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 I mean uh, pro providing the sec uh, security over this uh, and also providing the access control to various so if it's, whether it's a doctor whether he, whether he or she she is a duty doctor whether they, they, it's a multi specialty hospital whatever may be it is sir so this is an outlook of a uh, shared data. So here you can find that uh, uh, the patient one uh, 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 here um, uh, suppose if the, this particular patient one is suffering from like some uh, some brain damage like uh, so uh, he is being uh, uh, treated uh, by a, uh, a neurologist uh, in one particular hospital and suppose if that particular neurologist want to consult with another neurologist because the case is complicated that particular sharing could be made successful sharing is success. Suppose in case if uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, if it is not intended, suppose if the person is not intended to share the same, then the, the, the sharing could also uh, could also be stopped and not initiated. And in case of uh, uh, unauthorized users trying to access the shared information to the uh, new uh, care provider, that could also be uh, denied. So this is about uh, uh, the the user's permission. So here you can uh, uh, like uh, uh, you, you you can view about uh, the details regarding the surgery, like patient patient twenty four. So what is the uh, 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 how the surgery was being performed? You would be uh, you would have come across this particular term whenever you whenever we come out of uh, um, when we get discharge summary, right? So, when the date of operation is being performed, and what is the specialty in which the um, patient has been admitted, and what was the pre-condition, post-condition, and what any medical—all these things are being uh, uh, displayed. So, this is a descriptive uh, 
டிஸ்கிரிப்டிவ் டீடெயில் ரிகார்டிங் தட் பர்டிகுலர் பேஷண்ட் ஸோ இட் இஸ் இன் த ஹேண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த சீஃப் டாக்டர் டு வெதர் டு ஷேர் வித் திஸ் டு த அதர் பர்சன் ஆர் நாட் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ டு த ப்ரொவைடர் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் அன் அவுட் லுக் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஷேர் திஸ் ஹவு இஸ் ஆக்சுவலி த டேட்டா வில் லுக் லைக் ஸோ சப்போஸ் இஃப் டேட்டா இஃப் த பர்சன் இஸ் அண்டர் அன் எமர்ஜென்சி கண்டிஷன் அண்ட் த டேட்டா இஸ் பீங் ஷேர்ட் ஸோ திஸ் டேட்டா வில் பி ஷேர்ட் டு நியர் பை ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் திஸ் வேர் த டாக்டர்ஸ் கேன் ஜஸ்ட் லுக் இன் டு த what uh, what is the surge the person has undergone and why he has uh, w- um, and come to a conclusion uh, that uh, why he is now uh, um, unstable or uh, probably the, the person is not uh, uh, in consciousness and give a, give the correct treatment so similarly the, the surgery details is being displayed revocation of uh, the generated key this is uh, like uh, as i already told you keys are revocated in order to provide more security to the system uh so going to a public domain there is a positives uh, there are certain, certain negatives so we work upon uh, uh, increasing the positives and to reduce the negatives right uh, so just like life uh, we go for strengthening our strengths and weakening our weaknesses the same thing over here so there is a lot of benefit of course there is, there is some uh, limitations and that is being uh, the, uh, that is the security uh, uh, security aspect uh, so in order to prevent uh, uh, that so, so we uh, we go for a revocation of the generated key to prevent the uh, the data uh, from a distributed in the insider attack so insider attack like a, a person uh, who works in the same organization but still steals the information for example uh, um, as i already said uh, uh, if the patient 1 and the patient 21 are uh, are uh, are um, consulting the same doctor and uh, uh, they both belong to the same they, they work in the same uh, organization and uh, if patient 21 uh, looks into the details of uh, patient uh, 1 and uh, f- starts threatening then there is actually a security breach over there okay so the, for that only we go for access control and next level of access control is we uh, is that uh, we uh, we realize that uh, uh, we have provided uh, uh, the person with the uh, my wrong person with the access control and we revocate the uh, key generated so this is actually a collaboration diagram so how actually the, we go for revocation the revocating the key so uh, so first uh, the user initializes and accept the key generated uh, accept the key generated perform the operation and finally uh, go for uh, 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 i mean whenever the person uh, illegal uh, person tries to steal um, uh, the generated key then the uh, i mean the permission uh, whatever permission which is being given to that particular person is being revoked and the, and, and, the, and uh, no more uh, interaction is permissible by this uh, particular illegal user regarding uh, this particular user over in this pub- private cloud uh, sorry pu- public cloud regarding this private information so this is again a, a snapshot of uh, uh, the revocation of keys so finally ca- coming to the advantages uh, of going for this uh, uh, smart next gen this is smart healthcare system the main advantage is there's no need to carry the medical uh, healthcare records on, on hand um, uh, and uh, all uh, and the second one is to improve the quality of the healthcare provided in ensuring the patient gets uh, well faster so how we are, how as technologists as engineers and technologists we uh, uh, improve the quality of the healthcare which is being provided uh, is that uh, we give uh, an access to multi authorities over there so uh, the, the data hosted the healthcare uh, records which is hosted in the public domain uh, the access rec- uh, uh, control is being given to the doctor and the doctor can share it to the other other uh, uh, physician a senior physician for getting the uh, guidance or whatever and accordingly the patient can be treated so ultimate aim over here is to for the benefit of the patient as well as for to the benefit of the doctors to save the patient to increase the safety uh, patient safety not uh, the data safety over here the patient safety. for example if the person is already allergic to certain drugs some first people will be allergic to penicillin some people uh, will be allergic to amoxicillin right so so such uh, information are, uh, are there in this uh, so such information are, are already there in this personal health care records in the in the case of uh, even the case of emergency the uh, doctors who are on the on that particular on the on the other end will uh, uh, can come to a conclusion that uh, 
uh, we, we, we should not give this particular drug because this uh, drug uh, has uh, traces of penicillin or traces of uh, amoxicillin whichever uh, which is uh, um, which is an allergic to the particular patient and they, they can give uh, an alternative medicine uh, which has the same chemical composition and uh, the, the other one to uh, reduce the cost for uh, patients and doctors and can view the results uh, of uh, medical tests in online this eliminates the need for repeated tests that's what i uh, do suppose if uh, uh, a woman uh, at one particular place where uh, uh, she gave birth and after uh, uh, one year she goes uh, she, she goes to uh, she shifts to another uh, place uh, uh, to another city so there's no need to take the same tests uh, apart from the tests which are varying see blood pressure and sugar are subject to vary but certain tests are uh, uh, i mean the, um, the test results are uh, it is going to be the same whenever it is being taken so such uh, tests need not be repeated over and over again and uh, finally uh, we go for uh, the solving the key generation uh, issues uh, that is uh, one uh, aspect over here so future research directions so portability of clinical critical clinical data uh, so that is uh, that is the main that is the main aspect why we are going for the smart uh, a cloud based uh, a cloud iot based uh, medical healthcare system sharing information securely and accessing accessibility of data from different healthcare centers for the treatment so it is not where uh, so uh, suppose if the person is over here over uh, geographically located at one particular location uh he or she uh, her records can access to any of the any by any of the healthcare providers uh, who was working in some other hospitals also and the my phr machines allow uh, controlling of the sharing of the application software so that is the access control mechanism multi authority as we have already told two or more doctors handling the same patient they can um, uh uh help uh, uh, the patient get uh, gets the best treatment ever and as a, a future work we can also go for the, uh, detect the emergency situation so so here detection of emergency situation is that uh, like uh, uh, suppose if the patient gets fainted or if the patient gets unconscious then only the we are uh, the, this particular data is being shared to the uh, 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 to, to, to the nearest hospital and uh, uh, the person is being carried from the place of uh, attack to the hospital that is the golden hour and uh, the treatment is being given so future directions you can take this as, as to be a, as a future work and you can also guide uh, i mean uh, give a, uh, uh, um, a guidance or or an uh, overview to uh, scholars to work upon this particular area where using a wireless sensor network we can actually detect the person is about to faint okay there's a difference between the person is being fainted thus that stage and the person is about to faint he or she loses slowly losing unconsciousness and uh, about this this is a uh, 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 this most deals about a biomedical engineering where we need to know the behavioral patterns of the person and also uh, um, uh, to come up with the uh, i mean self learning uh, algorithm such that uh, so the person is about to faint okay and uh, the, uh, so the algorithm should be so strong that the person should actually faint then only uh, the all this sharing and everything we will become meaningful suppose the person doesn't faint then uh, it, it then the then the entire thing actually crashes so this particular uh, 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 problem could be taken as a future uh, uh, research direction where you can uh, definitely encourage your scholars phd students or uh, mtech uh, scholars uh, uh, to work upon uh, this uh, the this uh, problem there are other problem there are other uh, research issues also just which have been uh, uh, mentioned over here uh, uh like uh, suppose if um, uh, you you consider the situation where uh, um, the patient is uh, uh, something upon wearable side I, i would like to touch upon here suppose the patient becomes unconscious uh, uh and uh, 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 and uh, he or she is uh, uh, taking a walk and uh, he becomes unconscious and he falls and uh, suppose, suppose the a uh, kind request to the participants kindly uh, mute your uh, uh, videos uh, mute your uh, uh, voice i uh, will be finishing within a couple of minutes and after that you can uh, uh, give uh, your questions in the comments window so another bada uh, 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 sir uh, voice break hello hello bada sir ha ah, yes sir sir voice 
ஒர்க்கேஷன் <laughs> Uh, as i already told uh, like uh, it is a uh, um, uh, uh, possible for one particular uh, patient's medical uh, health care record data to be shared by two or more experts and uh, they are based giving the correct treatment to the uh, patient so that is the main aim uh, the the uh, um, substance out of this particular uh, uh, topic and uh, Uh, my phr machines uh, and uh, uh, allows for se- securing the health care but that is basically about the health care records and uh, 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 providing the ac- access control to the sec- health care records and uh, multi authority attribute based encryption and uh, the other future direction in which we can actually work is uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, generating the medical process for emergency situation with the detection of wireless sensor network we just consider situation Uh, a patient uh, you consider me uh, who, who is already suffering from uh, uh, di- diabetics or some other blood, uh, blood pressure so i take a walk uh, near my home and uh, i uh, i mean uh, uh, spontaneously i become uh, uh, unconscious and i was i am about to fall right so uh, right now uh the uh, the system what which, which i have uh, 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 depicted in this particular slide is that once the person has become uh, unconscious then the data is being shared and then the uh, the doctors on the other side is able to view and uh, uh, the person is being uh, uh, transmitted right from from, from the uh, place of this particular accident to the uh, hospital that is the golden hour and then the treatment is being given the future work could be we can predict uh, we can back learn uh, we can learn we can based upon the uh, i mean uh, uh, the experiences we can learn that uh, uh, based upon the behavioral patterns patterns of a um, uh, um, uh, patient we can come to a conclusion that uh, the person is dwindling here and there so he is about to fall which means that he is he is about to lose his stability and he is about to fall there is something wrong and at least uh, the health care uh, this is personal health care my son and my wife will get uh, um, uh, uh, i mean uh, an, a notification regarding this uh, there is some instability over here and uh, i am in danger and suppose if this danger is being confirmed then automatically the, the data health care records will also be shared and also uh, not only wireless sensor networks the variables uh, could also be there uh, like uh, uh the patient with a very high uh, neurological disorder like um, uh, they feel very uh, they they uh, the, the the stability is what is the main thing over there uh, so suppose if they become unstable during their walk or even during uh, walking within the home when nobody is there uh, we can go for a, some small wearable uh, device or uh, something like that, which will intimate uh, uh, the doctors and other persons uh, so that the the patient is under risk and uh, necessary action could be taken and also uh, like uh, we can have some apparatus uh, like thing uh, such that they, even the, pa- the patient falls down he or she doesn't it's like uh, how we go for a first aid balloon in a high end cars we have a balloon like just before the accident is going to happen that balloon uh, it gets blown and uh, the life is being saved so like that also we can have such future research direction so you can definitely take up this as a future uh, uh, projects and uh, uh, you can uh, guide your, i mean give uh, key uh, uh, points to uh, your uh, phd students or uh, tech students to take up uh, to be the uh, as a future research work uh, of this uh, next generation uh, smart health care and uh, and uh, uh, with this uh, slide i actually uh, wish to thank uh, uh, the, the 
management of uh, Dr. NGP Institute of Technology, uh, Principal Dr. K. Kumaran sir and Dr. S. Jagannathan sir, uh, Professor and Head uh, for uh, inviting me, uh, for uh, uh, voicing my views regarding this particular topic and I also uh, thank all the participants who have uh, listened to my, uh, my lecture. Thank you very much, sir, for an interesting webinar. Now, if you, anyone has any questions, please shoot out only through chat box. Questions. You can post your questions through chat box. Sir, uh, a question from our participant. OK. There's, a, there's one, uh, qu uh, thank you, Maithili Shanmukum, sir. Th uh, regarding the sharing of slides, I will uh, uh, let you know. There's a, one question, can the system be advanced using sensors on people history on regular intervals? Yes. The, the answer to this question is definitely yes. Um, so for that, we need to go for a, um, uh, again, a machine learning uh, uh, algorithm on uh, what what is the regular in interval? In order to predict a particular regular interval, so I'm I'm answering to the question uh, 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 asked by uh, Dr. Simi Pax Liel, right? And uh, uh, so, of, uh, using the machine learning uh, technique, uh, using uh, the the uh, I mean um, uh, the previous history, we should know what is the exact regular interval, and then we can definitely go for using the sensors. And the next question by uh, Dr. Sandhya Savi, what type of application in field of medicine can be considered for IoT based solution in near future? What type of application in the field of medicine can be considered? Emergency medicine, of course, definitely, as, uh, as we know what, that today, I, uh, I mean, right now, uh, COVID-19 crisis itself is a, a, a very good example uh, of, uh, for this. Uh, like, uh, many, uh, there are a few people who don't uh, uh, test for, uh, come for uh, COVID-19 tests, though they are experiencing some sort of fever or the, and they uh, come out only when they go for, um, when they suffer this uh, with suffocation. So such type in, in such type of things, this IoT based uh, uh, method of uh, uh, al alarming the nearest government hospitals or uh, uh, any hospital which provides the COVID uh, treatment uh, that the person is suffocating, so that the, he or she might be a COVID positive uh, patient. So there are a lot of applications in uh, specifically in medicine, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which which considers IoT based uh, uh, solutions. IoT based solutions, machine learning based solutions, and uh, robotic plays a very major role as we know that uh, and uh, um, in KMC says we have a robotic surgery itself. And, uh, uh, so the technology has been advanced so much and it has come to uh, into our city itself through KMC. Very, very thankful and KMC is very close to my heart because both of my sons have been born there. And uh, um, uh, so there are a lot of applications uh, 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 of uh, uh, the medicines which could be considered for I was the solution. Mainly this emergency, considering the current uh, uh, situation of COVID-19, definitely the same as situation. Uh, thank you, Maithili, ma'am. Thank you, Kwami, ma'am. Ramasamy, sir, thank you. Doctor, sir. there is a, ah, yes. Uh, Another yes, question yes. also. Is there any limitation on number of devices and infrastructure for the smart system? So, yes, this is like uh, from uh, from PSG CT. Uh, like uh, MM... Uh, AM CS PGCT. So it depends upon how we. Uh, yes, sir, it depends upon how we actually configure this smart uh, system. Right? It is. It is about what are the question. I. I. What I infer from the question is that you are asking about the scalability of the devices. Scalability is what we fix. Right. So what is the number of devices uh, to, to be thing? So suppose if we want to increase the scalability, accordingly we need to in increase the uh, infrastructure of the system over here. If we need only the basic thing, then we can go for it. What I have given is an overview of uh, the smart uh, system and not the concrete view. Uh, and uh, Dr. Arij uh, Nasser Abogin, what is the difference between e electronic medical records and electronic healthcare records? 
medical records uh, like yes EHR. ehr and emr uh, as far as my knowledge uh, mm, uh, electronic medical records uh, uh, like uh, what is the medicine which is, what, what what is the medicine uh, which is being given or what are the medications uh, uh, the person is under and uh, what are all the other type of like uh, whether dieting or uh, whether the person is uh, under uh, uh, is, is, is going for uh, physical uh, fitness programs all these things would be very much mentioned in the ehrs whereas emrs is specifically designed for uh, uh, communicating between the doctors a normal person could not be able to understand what is the medical unless and, and until the person knows what is the terminology to session and uh, mightily ma'am there is one question apart from rapid test kits uh, used for covid 19 is there any positive for non invasive testing methods uh, uh, probably i am a non uh, uh, medical person madam so i don't know about this uh, non invasive testing and the invasive uh, to testing and uh, this rapid test kits for covid 19 also i'm not uh, this is actually uh, totally based upon the uh, i mean uh, medical terminologies and uh, Uh, to be very frank, I uh, I am very far away from uh, general medicine. I am mean, uh, basically an engineer, so I will not be able to answer to this question. Correct, uh, correct answer to this question. And uh, there is another question from uh, Shiva Shankar sir. So right Ali. now, uh, uh, any sensors or tools are available for medical parameters is available. Right now, any sensors or tools are available for medical sensor, medical parameters. if so the detail okay i was actually involved uh, so, so I, i i i understand the question like if there is there is any medical uh, i mean uh, sensors uh, or tools available in uh, medicine for uh, accessing the parameters okay uh, about 6 uh, to 7 years back i was uh, involved in a research project uh, uh, which could detect the heart attack so uh, um, i uh, i personally not personally but through uh, the institution i actually uh, uh, visited uh, one of the chief electro cardio cardiologist at uh, gknm hospital uh, and he explained to me about uh, 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 i mean a device uh, so you are using the particular device you will be able to know that uh, the Uh, uh the so the, the the entire device is being built with sensors and using that particular uh, device uh, once it is being uh, fitted to a person uh, the abnormal uh, movement of heart beats could be traced so what he mentioned over there is that so you have asked asked, asked about medical parameter so medical parameter is that whether the so this abnormal number of uh, uh, beats whether uh, it, it implies that the person will be Now, under heart attack we cannot say that that, uh, that is what is the uh, detail which i got from the medical professional right so we can only detect that the person has an abnormal uh, uh, heart beat so it may lead to a uh, heart attack or it may not be to uh, it may not lead so that is not the only method by which we can actually um, come to a conclusion this is one uh, so of the um, uh, uh, tool uh which is uh, well, as an electrocardiologist uh, he had that particular uh, information and uh, thanks for uh, this question and uh, uh, thanks for taking me back to those seven years and to that particular project uh, this is very close to my heart uh, next uh, simi uh, paxiel dr simi paxiel as many emergency organ transplant can be allotted for patients in need uh, or yes uh, of course yes organ transplantation could also be uh done uh just like uh, this this is also that, that also comes under uh, medical emergency uh, so heart transplantation or lung transplantation whatever may be yeah, so that uh, uh, so suppose suppose if a person needs it and uh, suppose uh, the uh, the other per, uh, person uh, um, uh, is ready to um offer it like uh, ready, ready to donate it uh, the, everything could be um, centralized through uh, iot you are connected through iot and uh, uh, the information could be sent yes that is possible but with, with the, the things need to be worked upon it this is has to be done or not upon it answer is definitely it is possible this further research is uh, necessary thank you chandrakala ma'am sir thank you sir some more question from previous shot sir uh-huh. uh, from karthik kumar is there any possibility to act the cloud server 
and alter the medical information for particular person mm. is there any possibility to hack the cloud server yes. and alter the yeah, is there any possibility to hack the cloud server and alter the yes karthik kumar sir yes definitely yes sir. that is what as I, as i told you uh, as i told as i presented um, whenever we go for taking something to the public domain there is a, a benefit as well as a disadvantage but still we go to uh, go to the option of taking the healthcare records uh, to the cloud server in the public domain considering the benefit and uh, um, looking into the solution for the disadvantages so definitely hacking is possible and uh, the i mean um, uh, the, uh, um, breaching of the personal information is uh, 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 possible and uh, uh, that is actually a separate topic to be dealt with that is cloud security and you, so that that itself actually is a, uh, it should be a, a, a individual session since this is a very elaborate one i didn't uh, deal in deal about cloud security so, uh, since we are dealing about healthcare in cloud and uh, so answer to this question is yes definitely yes and that is why this my phr machine is being designed there are, and uh, and uh, other future directions is also there from this question i can come to that you, you can also look into what are the other possibilities of attacks uh, when the, the when the healthcare data is there in the public domain and uh, what will be the alternative other types of uh, uh, solutions uh, that could be uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, promising solutions and that, that you can actually take it as a research and you can go, go for publishing and uh, it's a very good question sir thanks for asking sir one more question hmm. yes sir Uh, sir uh, ramasamy asking ah, kindly yeah yeah yes yes uh, kindly mention the research areas gaps for fresh researchers sir uh, thank, thanks ramasamy sir for asking this question sir uh, as far as research is considered we all we, there's always a space like uh, that's that what i do uh, according to my knowledge um uh, there's always a space for uh, research at any situation that's what i uh, in in my a chief guest address i said covid 19 of course it is a pandemic there are a lot of problems going on uh, uh, we are facing day one day uh, the cases are high yes so that is the event which has happened in the life so how we are actually responding to it that that is the outcome e plus r is equal to uh, how jack canfield says in his in his book uh, um, the success principles um, so you always you have a research gap in any of the uh, area so when you we just take this covid 19 as a situation you have so many uh, gaps uh, where the researchers can focus uh, so one is the vending machine so, so voice based vending machine uh, so without uh, touching the vending machine the um, person can actually voice so that he needs uh, the sanitizer mask uh, and um, uh, and he can uh, just drop the um, amount and he can get it so here by thereby reducing the person to person interaction and uh, testing of covid covid testing uh, is just being done by healthcare workers and there is and the, the the most uh, difficult part over there is that many healthcare workers also get uh, get uh, infected by covid that is very that is a very hard heart wrenching right instead if you have a robo so so designing a robo uh, such that uh, the the robo will be able to test for uh, uh, the uh, the the covid 19 then definitely that is a uh, one uh, research area where you can uh, look into it and uh, supplying medical toilet cleaning robots is uh, one thing and uh, as i mentioned uh, locust swarms is one of the locust swarms vertically right well, locust swarm is, uh, is one of the trending problem uh, right now right so nowadays uh, there are a lot of um, uh, i mean um, you would have come across uh, uh, this particular news uh, with a few clips Uh, that uh, people are making some noise to destroying that uh, locusts but still loc see locust swarms there is actually a biological process over there which actually tremendously increases the productivity rate of the locusts it is like huge tons and tons amount of locusts which uh, which spans for about 12 to 15 kilometers uh, um, uh, throughout and uh, uh, the agriculture most of the agricultural crops are almost obsolete uh, in iran nowadays now it is uh, in control okay so you can, you can take for uh, so now we we learn about drones we learn um, about uh, this um, uh, i mean uh, uh, i mean drones with the camera 
so we can design something uh, uh, like uh, how to detect this particular uh, uh, locust swarm this zone and how to de infect that particular uh, sorry uh, how to uh, spray uh, our um, pesticide to that particular zone alone so that uh, people as well as the crops will not get uh, uh, affected so that actually uh, takes into uh, uh, picture of the machine learning technique so machine, uh, using the camera we, we should be able to spot which uh, uh, the, uh, we, we should be able to learn uh, uh, the, whether the captured image is a person or a, a crop or a pest so depending upon that uh, the, the pest can be spread, spread through drone again uh, there's no need for a people to go and spray uh, uh, the pesticides over there because there is huge amount of pests uh, uh, huge, huge amount of locusts so that that is also one of the major area this is what is coming into picture uh, uh, right now in my it because these two are the, the current research problems so uh, i just uh, apart from that there are lot of other research areas as such research uh, definitely you have a lot of uh, gaps in medicine in automobile industry in electricals of course you have a lot of uh, things if you look into an augmented reality as you as uh, professor uh, dr jagannathan sir said in, the, in our inaugural session augmented reality has a huge impact in, uh, in our forthcoming uh, days because the, because of this pandemic many of uh, not many almost all schools have go uh, gone to a concept of online uh, uh, teaching right so, so online teaching the teacher te te teaches the uh, lesson with the a two dimensional uh, screen and the student views uh, into that uh, and uh, uh, that's how the teaching goes on suppose if we go for an augmented reality based app for uh, education uh, like uh, uh, we project uh, suppose if the teacher is uh, uh, taking uh, i mean uh, teaching about solar system okay the, uh, the solar system itself can be projected as an augmented uh, we are uh, um, uh, uh, i mean image uh and uh, as a three dimensional image and the ch child will be able to know how exactly the sun uh, looks like uh, what is the uh, relative size of the sun when compared to mercury what is the distance between mercury and venus uh, distance between venus and mars how far is the last planet uh, where is pluto whether pluto is there or not how far is neptune from uh, the other planet all these things the, the, the student can visualize so that is one uh, aspect where you can uh, uh, get into uh, so ar if you look into it there are huge number of uh, research areas apart from uh, education sector even uh, in medicine like uh, in psychotherapy they use uh, uh, um, augmented reality like uh, uh, i'll just quote one example if, uh, since this the, the question is like as a very open question i'm uh, telling this so nowadays there's a huge increase uh, this is a very uh, a uh, bitter situation but still i need to speak about this there, there's a, a huge increase in uh, uh, number of child abuses right so child abuse uh, is increasing nowadays uh, day by day uh, though the child uh, uh, gets uh, back uh, to, to, to normal physically it is very difficult for the child to get back uh, uh, to, to the to choose mental state to the normal mental state it is because the person the, the child uh, he actually uh, uh, the child he or she who has underwent the um, the problem uh, he rewinds the same and uh, she and if suppose if the girl child is being abused uh, there will be some psychological implications like uh, uh, the girl child, the girl when grown as an adult will uh, uh, try to avoid all, all the boys thinking that uh, the entire men community is bad right so in order to avoid that there is a character treatment which is being which could be uh, given using an ar we call that to be applied vr yes if i'm not wrong yes applied vr so using that uh, the doctors uh, psychotherapists can, will be can uh, will be able to recreate the scene for example if the uh, ch child was uh, being abused in one particular place the uh, the doctor will be able to take that particular child using an ar headset that the, the child will be taken virtually to that particular place again and the, the the thing is recreated instead of a person coming there and, and doing something unnecessary uh, the 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 software the ai software could be programmed there. like someone good someone a good hearted person came there and uh, uh, helped the girl 
uh, to say let us go home that this uh, being in this uh, place is unsafe let's go home and uh, uh, actually recreating the scene maybe the scene is uh, a, a false one but definitely it will heal that particular child right so upon recreating the scene again again the the child bring uh, starts to unlearn what it is what was real and uh, starts to relearn uh, what it has been trained through this. So this is also one of uh, the biggest application of uh, uh, ARVR and uh, Thalmic Labs. Uh, there are a huge number of applications to be, a huge number of areas uh, and applications to be uh, um, uh, invaded uh, for, fresh, uh, you know, for fresh researchers. And uh, best wishes to uh, Dr. Ramasamy sir uh, for uh, uh, pursuing research in the uh, in the in the technologies as well as the other technologies which I have not mentioned, but brain computer interface. Many many technologies are there. Like uh, in Thalmic Labs, if you take a variable computing, there's there's a wonderful brain computer interface over there. To design the brain computer interface, muscle computer interface. Again, this is a, another important topic. There are a huge number of topics. Only thing we need to have a, an intense desire to do the research and hope uh, definitely everyone will be having uh, uh, that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. There's a lot of information <laughs> from this last two hours <laughs> because you are without, uh, so tired. You are too <laughs> convinced. Uh, two hours, sir, will be wonderful, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you for uh, such an informative session, sir. It was uh, very knowledgeable. I'm sure uh, that the participant would have gained knowledge by the session. Thank you, everyone. Uh, excuse me, Adi. I'll just add uh, one word. Um, to the participants, uh, thank you, pa, uh, uh, all the uh, participant friends who has given me the thank you message. Uh, it's a wonderful session. All the, uh, so thank you very much. So as a, as a word of conclusion, I would like to add this. So be safe in this pandemic situation because I, I'm uh, speaking about the smart healthcare. And if I suppose if I'm not telling this, then I'm wrong. So be safe in this pandemic situation. Uh, um, we, uh, we, I mean, we don't know what tomorrow comes. So in today, uh, uh, by today, let us uh, follow the uh, regulations. Wear mask whenever you go outside. Please uh, um, use sanitizers, uh, hand sanitizers, uh, and uh, uh, give uh, importance for uh, the social distancing. Uh, so our life is very important for us, uh, and our health is also very important for us. Uh, so with this uh, 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 message, uh, I, I actually uh, conclude my session. Uh, thanks, uh, and over to Arti. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all the participants. The afternoon session will start with uh, 2 p.m. Kindly join at 2 p.m. so that we can... Uh, <laughs> Get a lot of information. Yeah. Chandil, sir. Can you send the link? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. We will join by two o'clock. Bala, sir. Thank you, sir. You can leave the meeting right now. Thank you, sir. Bala, sir. Thank you.
Sir? 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 Thank you, sir.